Hey folks, welcome to Guitar Daily. It's Nick Granville coming to you from Wellington, New Zealand. So, um, yeah, I'm just about to head up to Palmerston North to go and do a gig. So uh, I thought I'd quickly check in and do this and um, talk about the hardest chord I know how to play. I was thinking about this, what, what is the hardest chord I know how to play? And I, I know which one it is and I know the kind of my philosophy and how, how to deal with things that are tough like this. So I thought I'd discuss that today. So it's the Steve Vai song called For the Love of God and it goes... E minor add nine. And then the second chord is F add nine. But, so you have like an F bar chord, but you move your little finger over to here, and then you have an open B and an open E. And it's incredibly difficult. So it looks like that. So we have F, C, G, A, B, E. Now he played it on an electric sitar, so, right, but the thing that's tricky about it is it's a ballad for a start. So it's very exposed in terms of the thing. But also, you know, you're picking out the chord and arpeggiating it like that. So every little mistake stands right out and and the thing that i found with it is that, like i can even just feel it now my hand, hand's starting to hurt right so what do you do if you get a chord like that well the first thing i always say to myself is does it matter in this case it does it matters you have to play the right notes it's just not going to work otherwise right if if it, the note that's making it tricky doesn't matter i'll just change it so if i can get away with Right, or maybe I can go. And I can put the G note on the open string and then hammer on. Those are both solutions. They don't sound the same, but it doesn't hurt. My philosophy is if it hurts, I, I'm not interested. There's, there's absolutely no benefit in injuring yourself over playing a chord, right? So I, I'm not even remotely interested in trying to just keep chipping away at it if it's like actually hurting, right? And so I'll try and find another way to do it. Sometimes what I've found too is if I play something in this position and then I move it up to this position, all of a sudden it becomes a lot easier, mostly because of that B string thing, right? The B string being tuned in a third. So a chord like, say, I don't know, this. Right, which is F, G, C, F. F, G, C, F. In that case, it's actually harder to play here than it is to play here because I can utilize the open string. So I'm always looking at that. Where is the, e is there an easier place to play it? Is there a way I can adjust a few notes to do it to be able to get around anything that's like really difficult? Because I'm not willing to injure myself over any chord. It's just not worth it, right? Um, so those are all questions I kind of ask of myself. Sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you have to play the thing. In which case, there's a couple of things I do. And you'll probably see me doing this quite a bit. First one, see how I've got the guitar on this knee here? Put it onto the other knee, sort of classical style, and I take my foot and I turn it on its side and I raise my knee up. And I play with the guitar in this position, like a classical stance. It's a lot more comfortable, right, for a start, right? So therefore, it's putting my hand at a much more natural kind of angle. And so therefore, I'm less likely to hurt it hurt from it right so I definitely do that right I sit like this I sit with my back quite straight and I make sure all my technique is good right because then you can kind of rule that out as being 
part of the issue, right? So I'll do that. I'll, I'll be in this position. I'll find the easiest spot to play it. See, see if there's anything I can change. So on. The other thing I do is I'm, I remind myself of how hard I need to push to get a note. So something like this note here. I can play it, I'll play it as light as I possibly can and still get the note to sound. If I play any lighter, right? That's how hard I'm pushing, like literally just past it, buzzing. It's not. And the other thing about pressing hard too is if you have big frets, you run the risk of pressing a note sharp, right? Between the two frets. Like say I have a fret here and a fret here and I press hard in the middle, you can actually push it out of tune, right? On big frets, um, which is obviously not good. <laughs> so so what I do is I make sure I'm pressing just hard enough to get the note going. I'm sitting in a position that, that's like this to make it more comfortable. Um, if I need to use a strap, I will, and I'll put the guitar up. Whatever I need to do to try and get the job done. That's the way I'm looking at it, right? Um, I look, is there an easier way to play it? Is there an easier position to play it? Um, what else do I do? Um, yeah, it's very rare that I've actually got to the point where all these things that I'm talking about don't fix the problem. Nine time, 99 times out of 100, it fixes it, right? And you, you can get on with it, right? Um, I was watching Andy Summers the other night play Every Breath You Take. You know this? Ah. This guitar part. And I've always played it like that, right? Which is kind of tricky because it's quite a big stretch. Oh, the other thing too is the type of guitar you play makes a difference as well. So a shorter scale like a Gibson or even Paul Smith being 25 inch scale is going to be easier than a Strat, right? Strat being 25 half and half inch scale is an extra half an inch than this guitar on the end, meaning everything's longer and wider and harder to play. But anyway, back to Andy Summers. So Andy, with um, playing that, I saw him do this thing the other day and it was back in the day talking about his guitar rig video and he played it like this. He didn't play it like that. He played. He brought his first finger down. I thought that was interesting because I here I was having played it, like trying to play the full chord and hold it, and it's not even how he does it. Right, so I was actually making it harder on myself. So YouTube is an amazing resource in that way. You can go and see the the real deal people playing it and um, kind of figure out how they did it. Because some, because nothing's impossible if somebody has done it, right? Um, if somebody's done it, then it, it, by definition, is not impossible unless they cheated and used a, used a computer to create something that you can't physically play. Now that that's been done plenty of times. Um, in fact, I've played um, recordings for people, I won't mention who, but a certain composer and he's written music that you just can't play on a guitar, literally. And so I'll do it bar by bar by bar and he pieces it together and makes his version of music, whatever. Anyway, I hope this has been useful. I hope this helps you with like if you stumble across a hard chord and what, know what to do. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks so much for um, joining me today. Um, yeah, my name's Nick Granville, as I mentioned, I'm from Wellington, New Zealand, I'm a session musician. Um, I play all kinds of gigs, jazz gigs, funk gigs, blues gigs, pop gigs, you name it, classical music sometimes. Um, yeah, and I post every day on YouTube, so please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Mm -hmm.